there was more in this book than I had expected. Okay, here is my favorite part of the whole month. This is literally the last day. This was like a treasure chest being opened up. This was a discovery. This was every reader's dream, whether they know it's a dream of theirs or not. If you are the type of person that loves walking into old libraries and smelling old library books, this is for you. If you are the type of person that goes into the old sections of the used bookstores and you look at all those old books and you're just like, why does nobody read these anymore? This one's for you, okay? This is the pocket library. I drew this out as a funny. Okay. Well, I didn't draw it as a funny. I put it in the jar as a funny and I drew it out and I was like, oh, okay, I'll read like one story out of here. I bought these as decor for my wedding. I don't know if that's the thing, the pocket university because they are so cute in the size. So I thought there are five stories in here. All right. I'll read one of them and that'll be me saying okay i tried it and whatever okay i tried to read the outcasts of poker flat it fell flat i got two pages in and went nope i don't enjoy this i'll try the next one i tried markham by robert Lu robert lewis stevenson it didn't hit <laughs> i struggled with this one and i was going this is why nobody reads these old books. This is why they've gone the way because the, the writing just doesn't agree with our syntax anymore. I'm really struggling to find any of these stories that are applicable. This goes back to my whole DNF thing. I just, I needed something to capture my attention. And I start reading this last La Rabiata, okay? And I'm looking at it and this book, Okay, here's Markham. Here's La Rabiata. And I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm going, look at how much is left. Why is there so much left? And then suddenly I see it. There's a second section to this book. I'm sorry, a second section. Okay, and I flip the page. Six more stories that I didn't know were in there. This is the treasure that I found, is the fact that I thought this was five stories. And then it became more. There was more in this book than I had expected. Okay, well that's great because now I have more to choose from and I don't feel so bad that I didn't read anything. So I look at it. Okay, Giovanni Boccaccini. I'm not gonna try. Okay, Giovanni the Falcon. I think I recognize this guy's name because I'm pretty sure this is the same guy who wrote the Decameron. Having just consulted, I think he is, yes. So I start reading this one and, oh no, it doesn't agree with me. Okay, fine, I'll read the next one. Okay, the next one is called The Wind in the Rosebush by Mary Eleanor Wilkins. What a lady writer, okay. I start reading this story. And when I tell you I could not put this down, I could not put this down. This was a gothic ghost story that had so much tension, so much creepiness that why, why didn't any of the other stories just, you know, when like a story just calls down to you, this was the story that called down to me. Like if you ever want to read a really great story that just has set up, has the thrill, has the mystery, you know kind of what's going on, but you kind of don't know what's going on, okay? Let me read it again. The Wind in the Rosebush by Mary Eleanor Wilkins, okay? The, the title comes from, this woman wants to go and visit her niece. She goes to check on the niece. She lands in this town and people are like, oh, you want to go and visit? Okay, well, you know, like we'll help you, but mm, she gets weird vibes from people, okay? She goes to this house and 
the widow greets her and as they are walking past this rose bush starts blowing in the wind except there's no wind and that just drew me in oh my goodness was it so good it was totally what i needed i would read this one again around christmas time if i want that creep factor i would read this around october if i want that creep factor this one was a five star read of a short story it was fantastic i felt like I didn't need to read those other stories, even though I kind of want to check out and see if any of the other ones were, were good. I mean, there's a Nathaniel Hawthorne in there and a Sir Walter Scott. So like, there could be some more goodies in here that I just haven't discovered yet. But I wanted to share that entire story with you because as a reader, we don't get these many discoveries. Usually, let's see here, you pick up a book and you read it, Doo -doo 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 -doo. you read it. And that's, there's nothing, there's the words and maybe the words let you discover things in your brain, but there's no physical discovery. This had the physical discovery of finding extra stories at the back that I didn't know were there. Like, I'm sorry, but that is just like, I am riding that high of that treasure find. Thank you for listening. If you've come this far, like welcome to me just gushing about books. This is what we talk about the love of books. So there's love of reading and then there's love of books. And when you find hidden treasures, like what a delight, absolute delight. Bam.